Hello guys, welcome back to Startup GH. My name is Kekeli Michael. Today we are currently on a 20-acre cassava farm and we are currently doing weed management. Today I want to share with you some five tips on how to run a very successful business, a profitable one, of course. If you stay tuned for long, I'm going to share with you some sure locations where you can sell your cassava, any quantity. If this is your first time, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. The first one is something you need to know. It is the most important, yet often overlooked. You know, every land and the, the type of cassava it supports. Now, here in the Volta region, we do Sika uh, a lot of the Caltech, um, how do you call it, sticks. We've tried a couple of sticks and we realized that they, are not, they don't yield much. So the first point you need to know is the variety and if you are wrong with the variety, massa, you lose a lot of money. Some of the varieties that I grow is the Skabanchi and the Banchihima, the Ampon. I think these three do very well in our area. There are other ones, but currently this is, these are the ones that uh, we are currently doing. The second point is you need to have a ready market. And that ready market, you need to get it before you start the production. Mostly people go into this farming and they do the production. The, how to do the production is not a problem. We've done several videos on how to do the production. But after the production, the, where to sell, that is where the market will win. If you joke, you lose a lot of uh, cash. You see, cassava can be on the farm for up to a year, but you realize that when you leave it for a long time, you lose some of the tubers to root rot and stuff. Uh, if you want to succeed in this business, if it's a six months you are doing, by six months, you should know that um, A or B is buying your produce. If, if it's one year, you should know that if you harvest um, all your produce, you are giving it to party A or B. And the important thing is that you need to get your market ready before you do the production. And if you stay tuned to the end of this video, I'm going to give you two sure markets that if you take any quantity there, they are going to buy it instantly and pay you the next day. Now that we've talked about this, the next thing I'm going to talk about, it's something that almost nobody discusses, yet can make your farm or either break your farm. And that is weed management. You see, Cassava is a, crop, a root crop that if you abandon it, it's also going to abandon you when it's time for harvesting. The, when you leave weeds inside the farm, eh, like the yield is so poor that it, it can break you down, it can collapse your business. So the trick is that when you finish planting, make sure that the farm is free of weeds and if you manage it well, you just have to do three or two weeding in the farm. Um, if the farm is so big, then you can rely on this selective weed size to clear the farm. The first thing you do after planting is that you go one month, you are not going to get any grass. But if the rains are more, then that means uh, by one month, exactly, this farm is exactly one month, two days. And you can see the grasses, they are even more than the cassava so what we're doing is that we are spraying a selective we decide which will kind of like kill the grasses and leave the cassava so by december we'll come back and pass through with gramazo so this is how we are going to use to control the grass by then the cassava should pick up and form a canopy then by the sixth month we'll control the grasses by slashing so if you do this right, your cassava farm is going to look very neat, very green, and you'll be smiling at the end of the harvest. If you understand this, the next piece of the puzzle will change how you approach this. Um, you see, never try to intercrop cassava with maize. Sometimes, because you are doing um, about huge acres, you want to intercrop with maize so that three months, if you can harvest the maize, then the cassava will um, continue and at the end of the year, you harvest and make double money. Never try that. Even if you are going to do that, there's a trick. Um, last year, what happened is that I did 10 acres and I, I intercropped with the maize. I realized that uh, the maize were 
were growing more than the cassava. So I did spray a selective weedicide. Unfortunately, the selective weedicide for maize uh, would kill the cassava. So the new shoot, I ended up killing uh, some of the cassava, the shoot. But if you go to the agro shop, they tell you that it's a selective for maize and what? Cassava. If you try that, uh, you are going to lose. <laughs> you, are, you are either going to lose the maize or the cassava. So the best thing you have to do is, if you are trying to grow the, uh, you are trying to intercrop cassava with maize, what you do is that you either grow the corn first, about when it's higher, you have done your first weed control, second weed control, then you put the cassava inside. But never try to um, plant the cassava first, then intercrop with the maize. You, are, you will end up um, increasing the cost of your production because now laborers will have to come in and manually weed. This is a trick that you need to be careful about. Never intercrop cassava with maize. You can either do the maize at one side and do the cassava at another side. This will give you uh, ample time to spray selective with the side to control the wheat in the cassava and a special chemical for the cassava, the maize, sorry. Stay tuned because what I'm about to reveal next will completely change your perspective. Now, um, let's get to the marketing aspect. You see, a lot of people tell you that do X, do X, but they don't tell you how to do it. In terms of marketing, eh, there's this company in uh, the Volta region. They actually um, buy cassava in bulk and convert them into alcohol, ethanol, and export outside. It's a Chinese company based in Japan. And I tell you, they can buy all your produce. Any quantity you have, they are ready to buy them. Now what you do is, you don't need to do any registration. You don't need, you just harvest, load them, and transport them to the company. When you get there, they have a very simple system. One, you go and weigh your cassava. You go to the offloading section. Uh, at, uh, an excavator will come and bring everything out. Very simple. And you go back and weigh the car. Now you subtract the difference from the initial um, tonnage you weighed. Then they give you a cheat. The next day, the money hits your momo. That's the sweetest part. So last week I, I, I did some small harvest about an acre. This is a farm that I abandoned in the bush. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, we went there and we did the harvest the same day. The next day we got a Kia Rhino and we moved to Japan. It's far from my end, but we got there very late and we wait. I got about six point something tonnage and I, I wrote my number. The next day, the money hit the account somewhere, maybe by before three or four, the money was in my mumu. So don't be afraid to do the cassava farm. Maybe they are far from you. And the interesting thing is, these Chinese are making money, so they have opened another factory, which can also take the same quantity. I mean, even if you send thousand, uh, thousand tons, they will buy it and pay you like small money. So this is a great news for people who want to enter into a Greek and you don't have markets. You can visit the company in Japan. It is called Sino. I'll get you the name on the screen. And I think the system was, it, it was very simple. They don't check anything. They don't, you just go and wait, then come and check your weight, subtract the balance and you get your money. So uh, about the price, um, a ton, they bought a ton for 1,200 cities, 1,200 cities for a ton. So. You can do the math and expand your farm. Another thing, another information I got from them is they also buy dry cassava chips and they pay 5,300 for a ton, a ton of dry cassava chips. That is Kukunti, yes. Um, on the local market, I check on the local market, it's, they sell the sack about 600 Ghana CD. I've done the difference, but it doesn't make sense. So I adopt that one. So this is an opportunity for farmers up north if you are looking for somebody to buy the whole uh, farm at once, then this is an opportunity for you to explore. So for those of you who are not closer to the Volta region, you can also go to a farm place, uh, Mami Krobo Island. There's another factory there who, which also buys in bulk. And I had 1,700 cities for a ton. Yeah, you can check on the price because now 
it's raining so we are harvesting cassava the price is dropping a bit yes then another thing to you need to factor is that sometimes when you do the estimate you forget to add the cost of harvesting and transporting it to where you want to sell it, when you want to sell it leave some money budget for it for my end a kia rhino charged about 2000 2500 full load to go to the uh, how do you call it the factory so you can also factor this if you are within the voter region for those in the ot region and stuff you can also come to the drop on when you get to drop on you take your your left and you just go keep going it's it's obvious it's just by the roadside if you have watched to this stage i want you to hit on the like button and subscribe to the channel so the last point i'll leave with you is that um Always make sure that you have ready um, labor to take care of the farm. That is in terms of uh, weed management, in terms of uh, security on the farm. Then also never uh, site your farm in a marshy area. In the midst of full anise, don't, don't try it because it, it will make you, the story is not nice. Okay, So always make sure that you are at a place where there are a lot of farmers. That way, some of the farmers need cash, you can, they can partner with them and they help you on the farm and you pay them. So some of these works are simple, maybe you need them to weed for you at a particular time. They have days, they are relaxing, they can schedule and come and do your work for you and go back to their farm. Because when you are doing large scale like that, the weed control it can, be, it can be like stressful. So these are some of the tricks that you need to have on your fingertips and also um, get an agronomist or get in touch with uh, a reliable agro shop where they can give you quality uh, uh, chemicals to be spraying and control the wheat. Um, when you come to our site, when they talk about fertilizer application, it sounds absurd because when you come to my end here and you say you want to uh, fet add, apply fertilizer to cassava, it doesn't make sense to them. They see like you're wasting um, your money. Because here, we do everything organic. We just plant the cassava and we leave them. But if you have the capital and you can apply your potassium, uh, how do you call it? I mean, those chemicals that boost the root. I think it's going to also boost your yield. Yes, those, those are some of the tips that you need to have on your fingertips. Never try to uh, manually weed, like whole weeding. It is going to inflate your cost of production. Okay, these are some of the basic tricks that I have learned the hard way. And I don't want you to suffer like how I suffered. If this is your first time, don't forget to share the video. Thank you very much. My name is Kekeli Michael. See you in the next video. Salute.